Arsenal Football Club, the pride of London, the heartbeat of the city and the capital's most successful club by quite some distance. I've been a regular fixture at the Emirates ever since it opened back in July 2006, but no matter how many times I walk underneath the Hornsey Road rail bridge, up the stairs towards the ground and make my way to my seat in Block 6, the feeling of excitement, the buzz and my enthusiasm remain unchanged. Over the years I've had the pleasure of watching Thierry Henry, Dennis Burkamp, Tony Adams and many more. My love affair and bond with this magnificent club continues to grow stronger and I wouldn't change it for the world. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Harry Simeon, a published author, broadcaster and freelance football writer, but above all, I'm a gooner. Back in January 2018, I decided to put my experience to good use and created the Chronicles of Aguna podcast. Since the show's launch, I've had the pleasure of interviewing Ray Parler, Kevin Campbell, Frank McClintock, Tom Watt, Robbie Lyle and Sky Sports commentator Martin Tyler. I've written a book titled The Chronicles of Aguna 2017-18, telling the story of Arsenal's final season in charge, had it published and collaborated with some of the finest Arsenal podcasts out there. None of this would have been possible without your fantastic support, and I'm truly humbled. But we're not stopping there. We're stepping things up a notch. This season, we're bringing you more shows, more special guests, more collaborations, more YouTube videos, a brand spanking new website, and lots of bonus content. With our audience continuously growing, the demand for insightful, informative, and up-to-date stuff is higher than ever, and so we'll be bringing a producer on board, recording our weekly show in a professional studio, and that is why we need your support. The show will always be free, and we intend to keep it that way, but if you like what you hear, you can become a patron for just $5 a month. Support us with our costs, and in our goal to produce content of the highest quality. Gain early access to our interviews and bonus content. Have your questions prioritized, and once you've been on board for three months, you'll receive a free gift to show our appreciation. You can find us on iTunes, SoundCloud, Acast, TuneIn, and over at FNX. Subscribe, leave us a review, and spread the word. Hello and welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna, brought to you by Loserpool.com. I'm your host, Harry Simiu, and on this bonus edition, we'll be looking ahead to the Gunners' trip up to St. James's Park this coming weekend. It's a 3 p.m. kickoff this coming Saturday. Right, we're going to do things a little bit differently this time around. I've got a special guest this evening. It's none other than football journalist and Newcastle United fan, Harry DeCosimo. He'll be joining me on the line to give us the lowdown on this week's opponents. Once both of us have run through our preferred lineups, we'll be selecting our loser pool picks of the week. Joining me on the telephone this evening, it's Harry DeCosimo. Harry, welcome to the Chronicles of Aguna. How are you, my friend? Hi, Harry. Thanks very much for having me back on, well, on the, uh, the different, uh, the sister podcast. But yeah, it's, uh, it's good to be talking to you again. Good, good. You're always welcome, Harry. You know that. Now, Harry, you are a football journalist, of course, a very good one as well, um, I must say. But you are a Newcastle United fan at the same time, so... It'd be really interesting to get your thoughts this evening on, on how you think Newcastle United will fare against our beloved Arsenal this coming weekend. Now, tell us a little bit about how Newcastle have started the season, because in truth, I haven't seen much of them. I saw the game against Chelsea, which they came out of with quite a bit of criticism. I thought it was a little bit unfair. Um, what are your thoughts on the season so far? And for those who haven't seen Newcastle, tell us a little bit about how, how things are going. Uh, well, on, on paper, not very well. No wins yet. Still in the bottom three as well after the defeat against Man City. But I think you've got to take uh, what happens in Newcastle with a pinch of salt because of the start they've had on paper with the uh, with the fixtures against Tottenham, uh, Chelsea, Man City, and of course Arsenal last week uh, this week as well. Sorry, uh, the only fixture that you could say Newcastle are going to as favourites, you could argue, is uh, Cardiff away on the second day game of the season, which they. Uh, which we unfortunately uh, missed a penalty in the last minute of the last kick of the game to uh, to draw that game. But in truth, we were, that was probably the worst performance of our season. So it, it, it kind of is is it's it's a sort of wait and see sort of moment. Newcastle had a good record against the team that they've lost to so far last season, but um, 
I think playing at the start of the season with the summer that Newcastle have had, it's uh, it's not been great. So yeah, it, it's it, there's a lot of um, wait and see about Newcastle, but it, it isn't uh, going well, uh, certainly not on paper, and, and it's really ranked, uh, sort of added to the pressure that comes with the fixtures against Leicester and uh, Crystal Palace after Arsenal, that kind of game, before we play Manchester United. So those the, the games against Leicester and Crystal Palace, well, uh, we, we, we need to get some points out of those games, which uh, at this stage of the season is never ideal to need to get any points out of any game, though. Yeah, no, that, that, that's absolutely right. And going back to that Chelsea game, the, the criticism that Newcastle took was mainly for their defensive approach. But surely, given what Rafa has at his disposal, that is the only way to try and level the playing field, no? Yes, anyway, but certainly without Lascelles, who was who was injured that day. There's rumours about a uh, bust up with Rafa in the uh, in the train training the week before. No Shelby as well. Uh, and obviously no Kennedy because he couldn't play against his um, his his, his uh, parent club. So if you take the, probably the three best players out of any team, um, then they're going to struggle. But out of, out of a team that's lacking quality on paper like Newcastle are, uh, then that's the, the answer anyway. Having said that, Rafa would have probably played with the same... Uh, I'm not sure he would have got five at the back, but I think he would have played with the same caution against Chelsea uh, as he did... Uh, against you know as he did as he actually did, but because that's just the way he is. But you, I think where the criticism really falls down is the fact that he had, Newcastle had a fantastic record against the, the biggest sides that he had that attitude against last season. Beat Chelsea, beat Manchester United, uh, beat Arsenal as well. Um, drew with Liverpool, only narrowly lost to Manchester City. I think something that needs to be remembered with, with Benitez is that he, he takes uh, pride in the goal difference, not just pride, but he views goal difference as, as a way of getting almost an extra point when it, if, if need be towards the end of the season because Newcastle, although it ended up not, master, not mattering in the end because uh, we because we finished 10th, for, for long periods we were embroiled in a relegation battle and we always had better goal difference, so it, it reduced the risk of us getting relegated anyway. I think that needs to be taken into account. I think the people who are actually criticising Newcastle for that are more interested in the entertainment side, uh, the neutral, thinking about it from a neutral's point of view. And of course, it's not very entertaining to watch, but Rafa, quite rightly, couldn't give two hoots about that. Yeah, and, and that's rightly so. You know, if he keeps you guys in the Premier League, given that he's not yeah. been given the funds that he should have probably had from a club the size of Newcastle, the, the whole Mike Ashley thing is a whole other story. It's not a can of worms that we're going to open now. But obviously, yeah. you know, Rafa Benitez deserves a lot of credit, in my opinion. He's actually one of my favourite managers in the Premier League, has been for a long time. And it goes back to when he called out Alex Ferguson <laughs> with his piece of paper and told him about the facts. It goes all the way back there for me. Um, you know, Rafa's a fantastic manager. Harry, what can Arsenal expect when they come to St. James's Park? Do you think we'll see more of the same, a, a low block and looking to try and frustrate us and maybe get something on the break? Definitely a low block, but but I'm not convinced. Certainly if, if uh, Shelby and and Richie are back, I'm not convinced it'll be quite as low as it was against Chelsea with the five defenders. I think the, the attitude will be the same, as I said, but perhaps there will be a bit more going forward than there was. Obviously, Kennedy will be back as well. Um, I think you'll expect to see, you'll expect to see what, you, what you saw last year when you came to St. James's Park, sitting deep in the first half, allowing you to get into the game. You took the lead in that game. But uh, keeping ourselves in the game till half-time, and then uh, I, I know we actually equalised, and then, and then pushing on after that uh, and, getting the, and getting the win, I think that's what, what he'll aim to do because from his point of view, it, it, it isn't broken, so why fix it? Yeah, that's right. Um, Harry, how do you expect Newcastle to line up on Saturday? Uh, again, it depends completely if, if Shelby and Richie are fit. They've both been training this week. Um, but if, if let's let's say for for uh, argument's sake that they are, um, then I expect Debravka in goal, um, probably Paul Dummett and uh, Lascelles. It's a flip between Shah and uh, Avian Shah and uh, for Dorico Fernandez at the moment in the other centre half with uh, Florian Lejeune, unfortunately out with a knee problem uh, for a number of months. DeAndre Yedlin will be at right back. Uh, Diame and Shelby, if, as I say, if fit, will be a centre midfield. Um, left midfield will be Kennedy. 
Braga, Silvi, Richie, and probably Perez. Perhaps just in Moto, but I don't think that Rafa will risk him for his first Premier League start in a game like Arsenal uh, behind Solomon Rondon. Um, and I think that that's going to be, so as I say, that, that's effectively the same way that he set up uh, last year in, the, in April, but with just different personnel. And I actually think we're stronger on paper now uh, than we were then, but I think also the, the Arsenal are as well. Yeah, I mean, it's no secret that Arsenal have had some defensive frailties this season. That's That's been shown up in the last four games or however many we've played this season. I expect Arsenal to line up with Petr Cech in goal. I don't think he'll be dropped. I know plenty are calling for Bernd Leno to come in. But for me, Petr Cech hasn't done a whole lot wrong. I think he's been asked to play in a way that's alien to him. And I think playing from the back the way Emery is is asking his team to do always comes with an associated risk. I've said it before, we've seen better goalkeepers with the ball at their feet make mistakes playing that way. It's just the way it is. If you want to play that way, you have to accept that to some degree. Um, I think it'll be Bellerin at right back, Monreal at left back, Socrates and Mustafi in the middle. I expect Granit Xhaka to start in the midfield and I expect Lucas Torreira to come in. You know, we heard some reports over the weekend that he was substituted playing for Uruguay in a friendly with a, a slight uh, calf strain. It's since been said by Unai Emery that he's, he's actually training. So it seems it was just a precautionary substitution. But I expect Xhaka and Torreira to get a go together in the middle of the park. And I think that could be a fruitful combination for Arsenal. I think Aubameyang will start on the left again. I think Ozil will play through the middle with Ramsey sort of operating from the right, but obviously with a license to to drift inside. And, and I think Alex Lacazette will start up top, given he's performed so well when he's uh, obviously at Cardiff last week and, and when he's come off the bench, he's he's looked exciting. So that's the team I think Unai Emery's going to go with. Um, Harry, you, you went through what you think Newcastle are going to line up. Is there anything different that you would do, though, if you were in charge? Uh, again, I think uh, the, the only toss-up really is do you throw Yoshinori Muto, uh, Muto in ahead of uh, Perez, because Perez is, is a bit hot and cold. Uh, he was brilliant towards the end of last season, but he started off pretty slowly. Other than that, again, I think the only one, the only two real uh, options there are, uh, are that or a centre-half. Other than that, I think the team picks itself. I was going to say, um, when you were running through that team, uh, that I, I quite fancy Newcastle to get in behind the full-backs. Uh, I think Bellerin is quite weak uh, defensively. Uh, Monreal doesn't have particularly good pace, but the problem is he's coming up against Richie. But, uh, but I am really uh, quite afraid of Aubameyang playing on the wing um, and Lacazette playing at the front because the first time that actually happened um, was at St. James's Park last year and it looked very, very good um, in the first half particularly. So I, I do kind of fear, I think if you don't fear Aubameyang, you don't, you don't understand football today because I think he's fantastic. I think he's brilliant. Yeah, um, but 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 um, but yeah, I, I I think there's an obvious weakness in that in that in that team that you mentioned, but there's uh, a, a frightful strength as well. That's right, that's right. Now, Harry, it's time to put your neck on the line in terms of prediction. What are you going for? I think it'll be a draw. Uh, I think Newcastle will take that. I think um, Rafa will just want to just get get another point on the board. Um, I don't think Newcastle are confident enough to win, but I do think we'll score. Uh, I think it'll be a 1 1 draw, if I'm honest. Okay, I'm going to go for a an Arsenal win, <laughs> of course. I'm going to go with 3 1. I agree with you. I think you'll score, uh, looking at the way our defence has been shipping goals this season so far. So, yeah, I'm going to go with Newcastle to score, but I think we'll we'll just have too much firepower for you, if I'm being honest. Um, and, and it goes back to what you were just saying about Lacazette and Aubameyang. I think that front two are frightening. And if Ozil has a decent game, uh, you know, and can pick out the right passes, then I think we can get in behind Newcastle. And if not in behind, then then we can play in front of them and, and carve the opportunities out. So that's my prediction. Now, the Chronicles of Aguna is sponsored by Loserpool.com, which is a fantastic uh, betting game. It's a football game. Um, you go on the website and you basically create a pool with your friends or you can play against all the other competitors and you basically choose a team to lose in the Premier League from week to week. Now, 
Last week, I went with Newcastle because they were, of course, away at the Champions Manchester City. So I'm still in the game looking at this week's fixtures, which are Tottenham, Liverpool, Bournemouth, Leicester, Chelsea, Cardiff, Huddersfield, Crystal Palace, City, Fulham, Newcastle, Arsenal, Watford, Man United. And then we move into Sunday, Wolves, Burnley, Everton, West Ham. And Monday's game is Southampton, Brighton. Oh, it's a difficult one because... As as we were saying off air, Harry, you normally go with the team that's playing Manchester City. But I'm going to yeah. do something a little bit different here. I'm going to go with Cardiff, um, who travelled to Stamford Bridge this weekend. That's going to be my pick. Um, I think they're, they're quite poor, to be honest. I think Arsenal made them look better than they actually are last week. So, yeah, I'm going to go with a, a Cardiff defeat there. So that's my pick. Looking at that, Harry, who are your pick to uh, get stuff this weekend? <laughs> I've got I've got two. I think it'll either be Fulham, as you said, whoever plays Manchester City, particularly at the Etihad Stadium, is is unlikely to get a result. I mean, Newcastle, as you said, you picked Newcastle last week, and it took all of our might to just narrowly lose. Uh, I think Fulham are a better team on paper than Newcastle, but I also think Man City uh, will be stronger. I'm tempted to go for West Ham, uh, but I think if I do, then they'll go then it'll come back to bite me. So I think I'll stick with Fulham. Yeah, I think I'll go with Fulham. I think uh, West Ham at Everton is a tough one, but yeah, I think I'll go for Fulham just because of the strength of Man City. And you expect uh, after a little break that they'll be back to their best after a couple of tough, tougher performances. Yep. Yeah. Not a bad shout, Harry. Not a bad shout. Guys, don't forget to head over to loserport.com and check that out. Um, Harry, do you want to let our listeners know how they can follow you on social media and keep up with the fantastic work that you do. Yeah, uh, I'm on Twitter at Harry DeCosmo, so everything's there, all my uh, articles, various different um, aspects of my work, all there. So yeah, Twitter is probably the best way to go. Good stuff. Harry, thank you so much for joining me this evening. Sorry. And uh, I, I would say good luck, but I don't mean it. <laughs> yeah, mate, uh, the best team win. Uh, I'm not sure we will, but you know. <laughs> no worries Harry thank you very very much Cheers, thank you that brings us to the end of this week's preview show my thanks to Harry DeCosimo if you want to tweet us your preferred lineups and of course your predictions please do so at chronicles underscore AFC and we'll be back next Tuesday with episode 26